Welcome to Real Talk in ELT, the podcast that talks about the reality of teaching English. Listen, I am not really worried about it. Life is life, and I just kind of... Yeah. If it doesn't matter in the next five years, it's not worth spending more than five minutes on it, honestly. Oh, gosh. Yes, that is so wise. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going... Yeah. Honestly, like, it's just like, okay, I just have to let things go. And that's coming from a person. If you talk to any of my like really kind of like close friends, they'll be like, oh, Kelly, you're adorable having those little things of wisdom, nuggets of wisdom. Uh -huh. Because I, so half the time I don't live by that. You know, I'm okay. a super anxious person by okay. nature. Yeah. But then I have to like keep reminding myself, like Kelly, if it's not worth spending the effort on, like stop worrying about it, you know? Yeah, no, it's it's it, like it's easier said than done, right? Of course, yeah. So you just, uh, just have to keep saying it to yourself until, <laughs> until one it day, happens, right? You know, maybe we'll live that way. <laughs> totally, and like uh, for example, that thing happened on Friday, and then yeah. I really uh, I found I found myself on Monday and today like providing some nice and deep pieces of advice to some of my students who are going through like tough times and everything yeah. and, and i'm like okay maybe i should listen to myself now <laughs> yes because i am going through that same experience yeah. i am here you know yeah. nerve-wracking oh gosh and come on like yeah be, let's no, be it's, nice I mean, to ourselves right yeah i know i get it sometimes we just like we don't we don't really i don't know what it is it's like we know what to do but then like actually implementing it in our lives. Like we know what our students should do, but teachers are some of the worst students in the world. Mm, interesting, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. so we yeah. know what we're supposed to do, like theoretically speaking, and we know how we're supposed to act. And we know what we're supposed to like do for studying practices and stuff like that. And then teachers are some of the, the hardest people to teach or teachers. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, yeah. it's just- yeah, uh, Lately I've been having, I've been, you know, uh, having some some experiences regarding that. So, <laughs> think, okay. So, no, are you ready? And then we can just start the episode, and we'll start talking about. <laughs> no, come on. No, I'm just kidding. No, actually, I've been having a very nice experience. You know, like yeah. uh, I I was able to meet a, a great group of teachers, and I'm I'm just learning so much from them, and I'm really seriously like really grateful yeah. for yeah for the experiences that I've been having lately. So I'll, I'll tell you more about it. Yeah. All right. Well <laughs> Get started then. Yeah. Are you ready to go? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, welcome back to another episode of Real Talk and ELT. I'm here with Kathleen. Welcome, my friend. Oh, uh, thank you for having me again, yes. Kelly. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so let me introduce you properly. We'll get into why you say again, and then we'll we'll talk about the real the real topics we need to get into. So Kathleen, I want to say hoppers, hoppers. I I think it's your call. It's your call. Can you can you say it in the Portuguese way that people say it? Because I think it's well. I guess in Portuguese, uh, people would be like Kathleen Oipers, and <laughs> yeah, all right, <laughs> okay, totally different from Hopers. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and then English like Hopers. I don't know because of the English H sound, whatever. So, but it's German, right? You told me that it's German. Yeah, but I, I'm, you know, I don't How really would... speak. Yeah, I yeah, really okay. Know. So we're gonna go with <laughs> hopers, people. Okay, yeah. she's been in ELT since 2014. In the past years, she has worked for language institutes and as a private tutor. She has already had the opportunity to teach students in general English as well as exam prep courses, which is what we're going to dig into. In addition to being certified by Cambridge English uh, for the B2 First, C2 Proficiency, and CELTA, she holds a BA in History from PUC São Paulo and has completed the Translation and Interpretation Program by Associação Alumna Alumni. Alumni, Alumni yes. Yeah, okay. In Portuguese, that's... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she also studies French and is currently preparing for the Cambridge English Delta Module 1. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. Going down that road, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah. quite an adventure, the, the, the Delta modules. Yeah. Okay. So um, second go around. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, I guess we should tell them, right? <laughs> yeah. Well we'll, well, well, we'll share what happened. It was kind of related to what we were just talking about, which is um, we have to be a little bit kinder to ourselves. And we also have to be a little more uh, aware of when teachers reach their cognitive load. Yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yes. Yes. And sometimes... You're 
yeah, say, okay, it's, I'm not going to be able to do this today. Like maybe let's postpone it. Let's reschedule because I, let's face it. Right. Yeah. It's enough, right? Enough is enough, right? Enough is enough. Yeah. yeah. So, so what happened on Friday? So we'll get into that briefly. Uh, so then we can, and we oh. have clips. Don't worry. We're going to share clips because there was some really good nuggets of information there, but. Oh, hopefully. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, there were, but what happened was you were just so exhausted because yeah. in the well, morning you had. Yes, I did. Uh, so lately I've been actually this year, this year, I really started like working as a freelance interpreter. Uh, so like working with simultaneous, some people would say interpretation, some people would say translation, but that's pretty much what you do. Right. And that day, uh, I, I remember like that I, I started working at like eight and then I interpreted up to like 1130 ish, something like that. And then we, we had already arranged like this, meeting here right and i remember i was so nervous and i was just going over the the topics that i wanted to talk about and um by the time we we started like uh talking and like recording here the the episode and whatnot whatever oh my gosh after i don't know like 40 minutes i had to tell kelly please can we like do this some other day because i can't you know like it's too much I got really nervous and I, that's it. We actually um, talked about like the, the, the fact of like this imposter syndrome creeping in, you know, and <laughs> it was so funny. Cause we were talking about being vulnerable and like how it's hard and how teachers have like this imposter syndrome, but then, you know, the actions that they kind of take and like, you just had like an episode not an episode guys. It wasn't like a mental breakdown or anything, but she was no, just, no, no, no. Yeah. like super tired because if anybody knows, or if anybody has colleagues or has done simultaneous translation interpretation, it's really, really demanding. And you yeah. get so, so tired afterwards. Um, I was telling you that my husband does it for the farriers associate, the Brazilian farriers association. So they have a bunch of gringos come down once mm -hmm. a year mm -hmm. and he's always the one that does it because he's fluent in, Portuguese and English, yeah. um, obviously. And he, um, but he's also, he has the technical knowledge of a farrier because he's a blacksmith. Yeah. And so, and at the, I know it, those, those workshops go for like three or four days and he goes off and he stays in the hotels and he stays literally with the uh, foreigner that comes down. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's like, he can't even message me. He has no ability to like put, logical thoughts together he's like i'm tired mm -hmm. everything's good had dinner talk to you tomorrow I'm like yeah oh, cool. i didn't no. know that he's alive but he's just <laughs> so tired he's so tired yeah the cognitive load is insane and like uh well i i've been doing it with like a, um, a colleague right so we take turns so which lessen lessens the burden i guess but still uh even though even when you're not interpreting you have to be there you know like really focused on everything we do set up like a back channel to provide uh support to one another while we're doing it and the topic also like i remember that th that day i was working with uh modern day slavery you know so it's really <laughs> intense and yeah yeah you 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 are in a different place uh yeah. compared to when you're teaching and right today well today's tuesday Oh yeah. gosh, I've taught so many amazing people, you know, I, so that's, I guess it, it had, it made all the difference, right? So even though it's, it's we are in the evening now and okay, um, we're all tired, but still, I guess like the energy is different. And I'm not saying that interpreting is not nice. It's just, I guess the, the, the way that you feel afterwards is different. And also I would also add that I mean, I'm more used to teaching than I that I am used to interpreting. So, of course, right, uh, it makes a difference also. Yeah. For sure. So yeah. for anybody listening, please be kind to yourself. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, yeah. we're trying to spread that positivity you know, oh, because because yeah. it does make a difference. I mean, we teachers reach cognitive loads like we, we reach a point where it's like we're not functioning anymore. And you yeah. have to think about what are you doing? Like with me, I mean, we were just chatting. It wasn't really a big deal. So, I mean, we can schedule we can reschedule. It's no no worries. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you're working with your own clients, yeah. 
and you've reached a point. I mean, how is that going to be, uh, because we had mentioned, how is that going to be with like rapport building with your clients? How's that going to be for the productivity of their lessons? So yeah, it's really important to think of those things as well. So yeah. thank you, Kathleen, for raising that topic. Yes. <laughs> oh, and thank you for having me again, you know, being so kind and so nice, uh, like at that time, because it was, yeah, you were so uh, supportive and everything. So thank you so much. Yes. And anytime, <laughs> anytime, my dear. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into the real topics that we wanted to get into. So um, because now you are focused on teaching exams. So how did you get into teaching exams for exams? Because mm -hmm. there are some people that I imagine are interested because one, because of hopefully the Brazilian legislation that's going to go through, it's not going to be too delayed with all the political mess that's going on now, um, that public teachers are uh, and, required, and yeah. required at, at least the minimum of the B2 certificate. So there is going to be quite a demand in the future. Yeah. So how do people get into, because teaching for exams is a little bit different than teaching regular. Yes, lessons. general English courses, totally. Yeah. So. Yes. Well, in my case, uh, it's funny because I, I guess I have to really tell you guys that my mom, uh, she is the reason why I became a teacher because she is a teacher herself. Actually, she's not teaching anymore. She's working with something else, but she worked as a teacher almost throughout her life. Yes. And uh, we, my family, right? My mom specifically, she, uh, she used to own like a language institute in Sao Paulo because I, again, I am from Sao Paulo and now I've been living in Campinas, but I, I mean, I've, I've lived almost all my life over there. Well, and then I kind of like grew up in this environment, you know, like my mom being a teacher, uh, she used to own like this small Eng language institute it was never like a franchise or anything, but still that was it. And, uh, I had, I mean, I didn't really have a choice. I had to learn English from a very early, young age. And um, the, the certificates, they were always like something present in my family. Like my mom, she uh, took the, the certificates, uh, the, the proficiency ones, and also the teaching ones. So I remember uh, that, I don't know, I was a teenager and I would see my mom like studying for the CELTA and I, will, I would be like, mom, what are you doing? Like, come on, you're already such a good teacher. Why are you still doing that? So this was something present in my life since forever. You know, I've always been in contact with that. Uh, but by the time I, I like entered college, I did take uh, a few months or actually almost like a year of language. So uh, that was actually my first choice when I uh, entered college, like studying language. But after a while, I decided that, OK, this is not what I want. I don't want to be an English teacher. I don't want to be like my mom. I remember literally saying that. And I decided to major in something else. So I, I, I changed my course. I, I majored in history, by the way. And for, I don't know, maybe five years, I, I was not really interested in like working with English or teaching or anything like that. But since like my mom, she, she used to have the school and at some point she needed some support she was going through some like you know like something and she reached out to me and said hey would you be interested in like going back like i know that you haven't been in contact with the language for a while but i mean you've studied throughout your life you have by that time i i had taken the i had sat for uh the um, the b2 first by the by the time it was like called this fce so that was the english certificate i had and she asked me to start teaching again because I did have some experiences when I was younger, but every time in a very intuitive way. So I learned how to teach by watching my mom, by kind of like copying what she used to do. So that's it. That's my story. But then when I got back, it was around like 2017. And that's how I, I officially like I see myself. OK, this is when I like became a, like a teacher because I was older, of course. And uh, when I got to the school and the my, my, my mom's school, uh, we always made use of like Cambridge materials or Macmillan, uh, Pearson, whatever. So she always worked with those series, right? And when I got there, I asked her, I say, hey, uh, I was going to work with teenagers, right? That uh, were taking general English courses and they would go up to like 
uh, a general English book level C1, something like this. And then I, I asked my mom, I said, hey, mom, how, uh, why don't we, you know, ask them if they would, if they would be interested in preparing for the B2 first or the FC. Uh, so I actually, it was, it was already called the B2 first, 2017, right? And, uh, and she said, okay, but I mean, it's different. It, it, it's not easy to teach like an exam lesson. It's completely different from general English. You, you need to know, or I mean, it's expected that you know the exams inside out and that there's a lot of things regarding these strategies and you really have to, um, you know, brush, uh, brush up your, your English knowledge. It's not only about like teaching skills. It's about language, you see. So do you feel you're going to be ready? Are you sure you want to, to take this on? And then I told her, well, if you could provide me with some support, I would be more than happy to like, I don't know, like rise to this challenge. And that's how I started like working with exams. I pretty much like we got the book. I remember that I, I used the Macmillan one ready for first. Yes, the Macmillan series. And I literally like, of course, I had my mom's guidance at that time. But then I, I remember my previous experience of the exam. And then I was just like following the teacher's book and learning with the experience. You know, this is how I started. Nowadays, uh, I don't know if I would provide, like, say, tell people that, okay. This yeah, is, is this a study. recommended path? Is what, okay, so yeah. do you think that this was successful only because you had the influence of your mother, because you grew up in the environment? Or do you think yeah. it was successful because other people might, I don't know, because it seems as if it was almost like a self-study thing. And some people are not super great with self set you know, like following a book and, and investigating yeah. on their own. They need okay. a little bit more. No, definitely. And I'm not saying like, should, go ahead, do that. Or no, because, but I'm just being completely open about it. Like, that's how it happened for me. You know, like, that's how I started. And after a while, uh, I realized, and that's when I realized that, okay, maybe I need to do something to improve my, my teaching skills. Because at that time, uh, the only like, qualificate or I don't know the only certificate that I had was the B2 first or the FC that I had taken like years uh before and if I couldn't after a while I realized that okay uh, my mom she is my reference but I need to go beyond and I need to get, get in touch with other people or I really need to feel better prepared because it, we're not uh we cannot toy with this. Like, this is serious, you know, like we are providing a service and, and, and like setting the bar high for these students, like telling them that we are going to help them pass, you know, uh, a certificate of a very demanding one. So a uh, very expensive one too, here in Brazil, also, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a huge investment for them, for students. It's an investment in their time and effort and, but also financially and everything else. I mean, it's, it's huge, huge, huge for them. So it's not something you can be like, yeah, for sure. I can help you, you know, yeah. prep for that test. It's like, you have to know what you're yeah. doing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, so, well, I, I do think that I have come a long way since then. Right. But I'm literally here, like sharing uh, my experience. And, and, and I, I think that, you know, I really had that, feeling that, okay, I need to do more. I need to provide them with, with better teaching methods or like better teaching skills. And that's, uh, around, around that time, then that's when I realized that, okay, I need to do something else. So I, I asked my mom for advice again, because she was the only reference that I had at that time. And she told me, well, you can either try to sit for a, a higher level certificate just to feel I don't know, more, more confident about your lang language knowledge, or perhaps if you are interested, go for like a CELTA, you know, uh, try to get in touch with ever, all these aspects re involving like teaching English as a second language. And I guess this is going to be something, I don't know, that's going to benefit you a lot, you know, so why don't you do that? We'll provide you with uh, the support and everything. And here I am, you know, like, uh, um, I, I really uh, acknowledge the fact that I've been privileged for many moments uh, in my life, you know, because I did have access to lots of things, right? So 
I was able to take CELTA. I, I've been teaching English ever since I was a kid. You know, my parents helped me and encouraged me to strive for it, strive for the certificates and everything, right? But again, I guess the purpose of this moment here is really to share experiences, right? And that's how it happened for me. So I guess uh, that's how I started throughout. Since then, I've been really looking for ways on how to enhance my skills, how to become a better teacher, how to learn more about teaching on the whole, learn more about exams, take workshops, do this, do that, blah, blah. And last year, something that I also decided to do was, again, to try to sit uh, like the C2 level, uh, the C2 proficiency and Oh gosh, hopefully it worked. Yes, you know, I mean, it did work and uh, I passed and everything. But I mean, having an, again, years later, another experience of like sitting an exam, I would say that this was, wow, fundamental for me to like become a better exam tutor, right? Or exam better exam teacher because having this firsthand account or whatever is something... Um, Ah, it, it's very important because you you really feel what your students are going to go through, right? So this is, I mean, a big portion of everything that has been happening. Yeah, yeah. People need to have that experience of being a student again because sometimes what happens. I mean, we can jump into this, but because we hadn't mentioned it, sometimes yeah. what happens is people get certificates and then it's like done, yeah. reach the point. But then, but you if if you're too far beyond that like you haven't felt the stress of a student mm -hmm. then you don't you can't really relate to what they're feeling it's like no you will you just do this do this and here's the strategy and that's it and that and it's like there's yeah. a lot more that goes into that especially like the day of the exam especially when it's that you know they're adult you taught teenagers. I actually prepped teenagers for the FCE too, but when you have adults, they also have kids, they've got jobs there, you know, there's other things that factor into like making people. Yeah. yeah. Completely <laughs> different. This is also yeah. a, like a, a new experience that I've been having like since 2000, 2020. Yes. That's when, because I mean, uh, long story short, my mom ended up like closing the school. She changed, uh, changed careers and everything and um the only teacher in the family now and i decided to okay let's sit let, i'm gonna set out to this uh, entrepreneur thing yes and then i i decided to just oh like set up my own business right and lately this is what i've been doing yeah and then you got uh tangled up with <laughs> we'll say tangled up with but uh hooked yeah. up with um Rodrigo at out of the box and then yes yeah okay so then how did that also add to the because I think this is the point you had been teaching for exams yes. but when you started working with Rodrigo right that's when you started teaching teachers for exams is that right yes oh and that was so nice I remember when he like texted me saying something about that like hey I was just wondering like are you interested in like having this experience because as far as I'm concerned, I, I feel that you have only taught like regular students. I mean, regular students, but, uh, we're talking about people who are not <laughs> teachers. Yeah, okay, like, non-teacher like, students. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. like, so I was just wondering like if you would like to have this experience next year, like the, I, I've been, we've been in contact for a while. Like I've been able to, uh, you know, have some contact with the job, with the work you do and everything. So. I was just wondering if you would, if this is something that makes sense. And wow, for me, that was, that was so nice. That was the best pieces, piece of news ever, because you see, like I was really, this was something that I was aiming at, but I, I didn't know when it would happen because I consider myself like relatively young, maybe not in terms of age, I'm 27, but still like in terms of experience, right? But, and, and of course, like teaching teachers, this teaching and also and focusing on exams, that would be a, literally a dream, a dream coming true for me because I've been so passionate about that since, since the, the, the very first moment when I actually start teaching these kinds of lessons. And of course, that was like this, okay, my ultimate goal or whatever, like in the future, this is what I, I, I see myself doing, you know, like working with teachers and just, yeah, like living the dream. And 
last year it happened, you know, like Rodrigo reached out to me, Rodrigo from Out of the Box, which is a school, like it's an online language institute. They do provide other services, but I, I know that they work a lot with English teachers, you know, especially uh, providing them with this support to get the, the Cambridge certificates and everything. And I've been working with them since January this year. Uh, I was giving this amazing, outs you know, like a very amazing opportunity of working with English teachers. And um, ah, it's been amazing. Uh, I'm using amazing a lot, right? <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but it, yeah, but it, if it's something, obviously, if it's something that you're aiming for, and then finally you get the chance yeah. to like kind of do it, you get really excited about it. Uh -huh. So then... Yeah, I mean, and, and Rodrigo is great. And that's how we met because we went to the, we had that event for Teacher's Day and it was super fun. Yeah. Here's my question then. How has teaching students differed from teaching teachers when you, in terms of like prepping for exams, have you felt any differences or like challenges and kind of switching that? Is there... There yeah. has there been a change in your in your teaching practice, I guess. Interesting. Yeah. Well, again, my perspective. Alrighty, guys. That's it. <laughs> uh, and and I, I think that during this last three years or so, right, uh, I've been facing lots of challenges, and I've. I can say that I've been rising to them because before I used to teach more like teenagers or yeah, mainly teenagers or young adults, something like that. But then when I started teaching online, I decided, okay, I'm going to focus more on adults. Yeah. And at first I was only teaching regular students, still adults. And I, uh, I was already able to feel the difference. Uh, and Kelly, oh my gosh, you know so much about it. Yes. That's the topic of the work. Yeah. Teaching adults is, yeah, it's quite, well, it's different because I, I, when I was working in a language school, uh -huh. I taught from as young as seven. Okay. Uh, all the way through adults. I have to say, I don't like children. Oh. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> I don't like teaching. Okay. I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of children in general. I just don't relate to kids very well. I don't know why, but anyways, I don't relate to kids very well. Uh -huh. Um, I wasn't a, I wasn't a super fan of the preteens, the mm -hmm. teenagers. I liked them. They were angry at the world. They were super hormonal and moody and they hated everything. And it was just like roller coaster of emotions. I thought they were hilarious. Uh -huh. So they were really fun for me. And then I, my preference is always with adults. Oh. And so, but there is a huge difference. Like I felt the difference having to teach those kind of four distinct groups. Um, I was like, wow. Okay my preferences for adults, but, yeah. uh, b because I don't know, teenager, teenagers are Deeply funny. Size, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, reflective. No, but teenagers are funny. I really like teenagers because they are angsty and like, you know, trying to figure themselves out and stuff, mm -hmm. but they also have the pressures of regular school. They've got the pressures of, um, their parents, uh, which are the stakeholders in their education. So there's a lot of other factors, you know, yeah. so when, yeah. when I, you know, was teaching them, it was kind of like, Oh, okay. You know, but they, they weren't, they were engaged if I was able to make things super engaging, the lessons and the interactive and just kind of relating to them as a person, but mm -hmm. adults have like different motivations and they have to, it's just a different vibe to the classroom. Did you, yeah. did you feel the same way? Right? Like it's just, yeah, it's different. And, and th there are different challenges. I think everything can be challenging, like teaching basic learners, teaching advanced lessons. It, it all depends. And I guess uh, along the way, you will really find or just you're going to be able to identify, OK, this is maybe my niche, right? This is what I like to do. This is maybe I, I want to give more attention or time into doing this or that rather than doing something else. So I guess time, time will tell. Yes. Uh, and, and then I mean, I've been having a blast working with adults. Like it's super nice. And then in the beginning of this year, I had this experience. Okay. Now I'm going to be start, I'm going to start working with children, uh, not children, teachers. Yes. I, I had no idea like what to expect. I was rather, um, intimidated to be very honest because I am like I don't know I, I, I've been teaching exams for a while I'm, I feel confident about my skills in terms of you know like knowing the 
the the the format, the strategies, the content, the I don't know, like the charts, the rubrics, whatever. Like for me, this so since I, since I've been doing that for a while, I was feeling confident about my expertise, right? And also because. Last year, I sat the C2, and for me, this was this this also represented. Um, it really boosted my confidence. You see, so for me, I was working with all that. But still, let's see what's going to happen. And uh, at out of the box, I I was given a huge group. Like I guess that in the beginning, we had like something like twelve teachers. You know, in and for me, that's, this was a completely new experience because I've never had such a large group. I've never worked with such a large group, let alone online, you know. So that was very challenging. But every week, okay, let's do this. Yes. And you asked me. Well, about it's like classroom management, right? So then like it's like going back to Celta days. It's like, oh, God, okay. So I've got 12 people. I'm working online. Now I have to figure out the breakout rooms. Yeah. Oops, sorry. My dog is. Very good, very good. Yeah. Having a she's having a temper tantrum. Yeah, oh, so yeah. <laughs> she's she's such a like a naughty little dog. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you have to deal with like the classroom management aspect. You have to deal with it, and then you're also teaching teachers. And I can see the intimidation factor because sometimes teachers are extremely judgmental. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I love <laughs> our profession, but sometimes the teachers are judgmental of other teachers, right? So yeah. if they go into a classroom, you know that the teachers, more or less, they have their own style, they have some background, they know what they're doing, hopefully, yeah. in their own classrooms. And so if you, um, I don't know, make a, a mistake or, or something happens or whatever, it just becomes more of an issue mm -hmm. when you're dealing with teachers because teachers can see all of those little things. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I mean, I was terrified of it happening. Oh my gosh, I cannot make a mistake. I was, you know, Celta days, like anticipating all the problems. Okay. They might ask me this. They might ask me that. So I was getting crazy about it because <laughs> just neurotic about it. And you, <laughs> and you know, what's so funny. It's just kind of like, yeah, but okay. So teachers can be hypercritical, but they also can be very, very, um, I, you know, kind of relax when things are like, oh yeah, it happened to me the other day in class. You know what I mean? So it's like, sometimes they're hypercritical and then other times they're just very like, oh, don't worry. It happens to me all the time. So yeah. you never know what very balance supportive. you're going to get. Yeah, exactly. Yes. But I mean, at first I really didn't know what to expect. So I was just, okay, trust your, uh, like trust your, your, your gut feeling, you know, just do your best and like, that's it, you know? And, and, face it Let, let's do it right like rise to to this situation and let just do your best put your best foot forward and go yeah but oh gosh seriously and i i really feel that some of my students are, are gonna listen to it because they are so nice we i mean we built such a nice uh classroom vibe energy you know i really i truly feel that people care about others they are supportive they are even though some days they are tired but they come to class they you know they are so determined so hard working people so i don't know if that was my group or what happened but i i had such a nice i've been i'm still teaching them so i've been having such a nice experience with teachers um and when it comes to the challenges of course there's this whole thing about like feeling maybe oh gosh they're gonna judge me if i make a mistake they're gonna feel that i'm not like prepared to to tackle this like to, to to just be their teachers right but with them what i could tell yeah so now i'm gonna share some of the challenges that i've been facing lately with them some I, something some things that i could tell is that sometimes uh they were like really rushing things uh maybe it's because some kind of ex external pressure they they had this feeling that they needed to get the certificate by a certain date because well, uh, a position, a job position might be at stake, right? Or uh, some person in the, the school that they work for, it might be asking or, you know, really demanding it from th these people. So I felt that sometimes uh, some of my students were just really rushing things out. And th that is so bad. And at, at, time, at some moments, we really had to take a few steps back 
take a deep breath and say, hey, let's have an honest conversation here, guys. Like, if you keep doing that, if you keep rushing things, uh, you're going to become, it's likely that you will become rather frustra like frustrated with the whole experience. You're not going to seize it at all. Maybe you're not going to get the result that you could get, right? Because you were so, wow, I, I feeling that you really had to deliver that. And uh, in the end, you're just not going to have, you're not going to be able to make the most of the experience. You're not going to really make the most of the process, which is so nice. It's so enriching, you know, like preparing for a can exams in general, but like Cambridge ones, I'm biased to say it, I know. But you see, I just feel that you learn so much from it, especially being a teacher, because your you develop your language awareness. You like the, the tasks themselves, they are really challenging and you know, I think I think that they are uh, some of them are, are really uh, interesting and they really make you think, you see. So if you rush things out in the end, what would be the outcome? Yes, perhaps it can be a negative one. So I remember that during this year, I had to take a few steps back sometimes and have sometimes even like private conversations with some of them. Like, are, are you sure you want to do this? Like, are you sure that this is how you're, you want to handle things? okay, I know that you're pressured. I know that you have to do something, deliver it, but, you know, like think about things, think, think it through. Is it really worth it? Because on top of all that, it's, you're investing uh, money on it. And like we, you put it right. It's not, this is not the cheapest uh, certificate out there. So let's, let's be thoughtful and let's really consider, take things into consideration before, you know, making a decision or something like that. Yeah. And I think that there, the, because I had Rodrigo came on with Sergio the other day um, and we were talking about the, the exams as well, because I think is, I think this is kind of my prediction that this is going to become like a hot topic in the future because of all of the legislation that's coming through with bilingual schools and everything else. Mm -hmm. And because we have new waves of teachers coming into the profession at all times, there's uh, and one of the things that was interesting when we were talking about it, the, the three of us the other day, was um, that there's kind of this misinterpretation of the rubrics and how to score things. Mm -hmm. It seems as if, and it kind of aligns with what you're saying, is that it seems as if we're trying to check boxes and accumulate more things yeah. instead of using the things that we have in a more um, efficient or effective way. Yeah. So sometimes I, way. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So sometimes it's like, we see these, um, like we see, uh, these books and stuff as, as things to, to check off and like, okay, I have this list of vocabulary. I need to just, you know, memorize the list. It's like, yeah. that's not really Cram for it. Right. Yeah. It doesn't yeah, yeah. work like that. It doesn't yeah. work like that. And it takes time for you to act, literally like start incorporating all the, all the chunks, all the mm -hmm. structures, because sure, uh, if you are exposed to something, maybe you can look at it and identify and understand like, ah, okay, I can make out what it means. I understand the, the uh, like, what is this structure communicating here? So you comprehend it. That's perfect. But how can you make it your own? How can you like incorporate it into your active like vocabulary or whatever? Because it, it, use it in a natural way. Yes, because you don't want to just as you put it, like memorize a bunch of stuff. Uh, then on the day of the exam, you go there, you're going to like, okay, let me try to remember everything. And I mean, it's not going to be meaningful. It, examiners will be able to tell that, okay, this person clearly does not know how to use this structure appropriately, you know, right. because, okay, well, maybe... Go ahead. and then, it, you know, because then it will thinking about that, it's like, okay, so they can't use it appropriately. Then if they're if they're a teacher as well do you want your students to do that yeah. it's like it's like we're doing exactly we're, <laughs> way back to the beginning of the podcast we're doing exactly like we're preaching something and saying like okay we know that we should do this we know that this is the correct thing you know but then sometimes we don't like follow through with it yeah. we have the expectation for our students but then when we have to do it it um it kind of i don't know escapes yeah. us for momentarily and we get wrapped up in just trying to finish things as quickly as possible and get them done and yeah and at the end of the day i mean if you don't really know the 
I'm a big proponent of like, use what you know in a very creative way before you start accumulating more and more. It's like the hoarders. Have you ever seen that show uh-huh. Hoarders? Yeah. Where yeah. they just have oh, like man. mountains of stuff in their house. I mean, it's, it's a super sad, yeah. I think, no, mental sure, illness. Sure. So like, it's so choose horrific. to be that way, maybe. Yeah. No, 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 no. But yeah. it's like, it's like sometimes teachers are hoarders. We hoard materials. We hoard, you know what I mean? And so we get in this to like hoarding manic mm-hmm behavior yeah. and then we're trying to accumulate 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 and then, then we just actually don't the things that we've accumulated we don't actually use yeah i i'm super guilty of this too like i mm-hmm. i have literally hundreds and hundreds of books and materials and like half the time i don't even refer back to them yeah so like what what's the point you know and i see that as like as knowledge too like if you're if you're just trying to acquire and then not actually use it meaningfully then Mm -hmm. where where are you going with this what's the exactly because i mean and that's literally what i and i I don't know i don't i wouldn't put it like i've learned a hard way because for me uh i really see myself as like a lifelong learner yeah hopefully i'm gonna have time and uh, energy to keep studying yeah because there will always be room for improvement for everybody you know so your learning journey doesn't end when you get a certificate because perfect segue kathleen so that was our next topic <laughs> no because look at like, how naturally you just did that <laughs> no it's like because that's it man because right. I no, mean, it is. You're, you're gonna okay you're gonna prepare for it spend i don't know two years of your life uh going over the content and doing tasks and preparing for the big day and okay, maybe you pass, maybe, okay, let's see, let's imagine that, okay, you pass it, you got the certificate, now what? You're going to forget about all of that? Exactly, exactly, now what? And, and like, that's the thing, because eventually, well, if you've gotten the certificate, like, for example, if people go through the whole thing, they get the whatever certificate, B1, uh, B2, C1, C2, whatever certificate they, they get, then eventually you're going to have to be teaching learners at that level. So if you haven't truly spent the time to kind of like investigate a little bit and then continue on after you've received that certification, mm-hmm. you know, like what's it's, the point? yeah, what's yes. the point? It's not something to check off. It's kind of like, okay, milestone reached. Let's keep going. Like I, I learn things every day. I'm constantly, I, I will give you the perfect example of how I am also a lifelong learner. And, I, mm-hmm, yeah. and, and people just, uh, it, it's shocking to me that it's like, check the box. Um, so um, I'm American. My husband is Brazilian. Mm-hmm. And I am obviously trying to learn Portuguese. Well, I mean, I'm decent at Portuguese, but I just don't really put a lot of effort into it. I'm a terrible <laughs> language student, by the way. I've never taken oh. a language class. Like I've never taken it up. Yeah. So it's, you know, okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, and then I have some exposure to other languages. Like when I was in high school, I studied French. When I was in college, I studied Spanish. So like I have exposure to other things. But for the most part, it's like English and Portuguese day to day life. Yeah. My husband grew up here for the most part. He went to high school and he finished high school in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, he lived there for like phew, over a decade. I mean, okay. super super fluent. And I mean one of the like sometimes i think i'm like i question myself i'm like how do you okay that's fine Uh. (laughs) he will literally like there'll be something on the internet i'm like what is this and he was like are you kidding me right now i'm like no what is this like i don't know what this is Uh like it's either a word portuguese yeah or Or, or, no in in english English. yeah uh uh-huh in english and i'll say i'm like you've heard of this and i was like is this new is this like a new slang or something and he was like (laughs) who am I married to? Like, sometimes he's like, who's the English teacher, Kelly? I was like, oh, shit. Oh, like, <laughs> like, I get so anxious about it. I'm like, oh my God, is, is should, should I know this? And then he'll explain it to me. Mm-hmm. And what I've realized is, is that our journeys were very, very different. So I was born there, obviously grew up there, went through the public school system. I entered the military, went through that, went through like private uh, university. And I had the kind of this, you know, uh, how can I say kind of like traditional, like business track was mm-hmm. always working in like, uh, administration and stuff like that. So I never really, um, I, I didn't work a blue collar job. Mm-hmm. My husband went there 
as a, uh, a foreigner. He learned English in an American high school. He was constantly together with the other uh, Latino community, like whoever spoke Spanish and Portuguese, like that's the group that he hung out with. Those were his friends. Okay. And then um, his brother was working for the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston because he's an instrument maker. And, mm -hmm. and my husband would help him with that, with like antiquities and restoration. But then he went very blue collar and he went into construction. Mm -hmm. The language used in private universities mm -hmm. and the language used at construction sites is to there's different. no correlation. And so yeah. he was exposed to a specific type of language. Mm -hmm. But not better or worse, just like yeah, and, different, and like information. Different, yeah, totally different context. Different. Yeah. And then I was exposed to what I was exposed to through my experiences. And those things sometimes don't line up. And he knows a lot more things about things that I have no idea about. I'm like, what is that? And he's like, okay, yeah. let's and he jokes around with me. He's like, Okay, well, let's have an English lesson for the English teacher. <laughs> and it's funny, but at the same time, it's like it kind of really sets off an alarm. It's like, okay, so if people really have no idea, you know, if they assume that native speaker, non-native speaker, once they get a certificate, once they finish a, a university, like it no. doesn't stop. There's no, it doesn't stop. Yeah. Ever. And also, and if you don't put those, the things you've learned into practice, oh gosh, in time, you might end up forgetting them about them. Right. And, and absolutely. And you see, so, uh, that's th this is something interesting and and just like just to do some um actually close a little bit the the, the things about like the challenges regarding the teachers and everything it, like we've talked about like rushing things out with uh, and two other things that i i took notes of imposter syndrome right so either feel like the comparison you get caught up in this idea of like comparing yourself to one another or like striving for perfection when there's no such thing yeah yeah okay so we can just uh, on we'll just <laughs> we'll cement that idea here yeah there's no perfect lesson there's no perfect teacher no there's absolutely no way to f finish like or end or, or or accumulate or or check off a box yeah like in in english teaching there there's n I, I can't even imagine that ever there was ever a person in the history of histories that knows everything <laughs> about the language, yeah, everything about teaching, everything about like the nuances of society that are coming out. Like it's just, it's like impossible. So there's no perfect, especially. Yeah. I, I'm sure you had this experience when you went to, when you did your Celta course. Like, what is the formula for the lesson? Yeah, there isn't one. <laughs> like, <laughs> there isn't one. There isn't one. There's like universal truths, general principles that we follow because based on science and, and uh, you know, studies. You got to start from some like, oh, yeah. and this is interesting, like for mm. like for people who are starting out. Yes, because I guess that perhaps having access to like a, a, a pattern or maybe like you feel, OK, I'm following the, the steps, I'm doing the right thing, I'm I'm right. I'm going through that a uh, well-trodden path. Like, okay, everything is going well. Uh, I, I I guess I'm on the right track. So, okay, I can check check out check off the boxes and everything. But after a while, I think that you're gonna yeah you're gonna be like fed up with that. You're gonna you're gonna want want to try to find you the way you you like to teach the the way you you like to approach things. How you are going to you know uh you know just focus on the 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 staging the lessons and everything i, I guess in time but it it, it 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 requires time uh experience and also lots of exchange something Studying. that i've learned <laughs> study sure but and yeah. also i guess having uh really exchanging ideas with your colleagues talking to people get get training talk to other teachers i feel that it benefits you so much you know like and, and and when i talk about that i'm not really saying okay you need to seek validation that's it's different it's nice to feel that you are being acknowledged that people are paying attention to what you're doing and people are saying hey that's good keep Keep, keep up with the good work. So, of course, I'm not going to be, you know, oh, no, I don't care about, like, what others think of me. 
I, I, I still do, <laughs> you know, I do. No, I we do. all do. We yeah, all do. I, it's I, what we had talked about last week, right? We, we had said like, there's a certain point, especially if you're isolated, like you are, I am, I'm isolated. I work privately. You work privately. I mean, now you're, you're in with out of the box. So you're in the, you know, working with a group and I have, you know, I'm starting to, to, to work with on some projects and stuff, but we're relatively isolated. Uh -huh. So we need to have validation at some, sometimes, mm -hmm. but then, like you said, we need to start with, I want to say this very carefully based, <laughs> based on evidence, based on research, based on good practices, yeah. we have to start questioning things mm -hmm. because yeah. that's how the process evolves. But we have to learn. I, <laughs> I said this before, I'll say it again, we have to learn how to play the game yeah. first to yeah. break the rules successfully. So if you yeah. want to break the rules, that's fine, but you have to know how to adhere and follow the rules and understand why those rules have been predominant. Like you said, the well-trodden path, why mm -hmm. those rules have been put in place, mm -hmm. understand how they work, understand that whole system, that whole process. And then afterwards, then you can start breaking the rules successfully. But you know, that's with experience. That's with communication with fellow teachers and things like that. And of yeah. course, and, and research <laughs> and i guess that that has been my my teaching journey so far you see like i still I, wow um I, I i take pride in everything that i have achieved in the last few years you know so even though again like wow i've had access to many things you know i i i feel that i am indeed like a privileged person to have had access to all of those uh courses and materials or whatever certificates and such but i still i feel really proud of my journey like learning a journey as a learner and journey as a teacher so far because i mean it, it does require hard work it's not okay like things were easier for you sure they were but still uh i i put a lot of effort into it i channeled a lot of energy time you know in order to get the results that lately I've been getting maybe, right? But I do think, think that the journey is endless. Oh gosh, you, there's always uh, new things to learn, the nuances of the context, the meanings, uh, registered this and that. And especially since I've been working a lot with like interpretation, like I, I also had the opportunity of learn more about that other field of like studies and or this other area right but we still use yeah, English yeah but that's that's a whole interpretation of like uh intention and and proper I mean articulation yes. oh, oh my god yes. yeah that's a whole nother thing but it, it yeah. all comes it all you know breaks down into how how is society interacting with each other? You know what I mean? What what is the what, what are we doing nowadays? Because nowadays it's it's obviously changing. Like things are moving in a different direction. People are are interacting in in different ways. It's super globalized. Do you know? Mm -hmm. So like we're, yes, we're dealing with language, but we're also dealing with communication. Like how yeah. are people going to communicate with each other? And that's yeah. that's a whole nother ball game. It's not just grammar and sometimes that's it and this is interesting like trying to strike a, a like a nice and healthy balance uh when teaching exams because you sure when it comes to the criteria right like accuracy is there right range is there so how can you strike this balance when teaching ex lessons like that okay because you got to tell the students the learners all right this is you you are expected to deliver this and that but at the same time, uh, should we get too caught up on accuracy all the time? You know, appropriate, uh, appro appropriativeness, I guess that's how Appropriacy? You uh, yeah, that's yeah. it. Right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Appropriacy. Because after a while, okay, do, do people actually use language like that? Let, let's like it's accurate. Well, here's the thing. The, the proficiency tests are usually quite academically sent. I'm not everything, but they're, they lean more towards academic, mm -hmm. but there are some moments where it has to be relatively informal. Mm 
Yeah. Right. So like the interaction, especially in the speaking tests and, and some of the writing tasks are relatively informal. So like knowing how to navigate that, knowing who is your audience, how are you supposed yeah. to interact with them and how can you use the language to like I think get that, it, you know, it's all about flexibility, you know, yeah. I, I thought, that's the beauty of it. Come on, because uh, and as like a person who uses English as a tool in their jobs, professional work, whatever, like being able to in, in, raise your uh, language awareness at this level, it is amazing because by having this flexibility, by learning, improving this paraphrasing skill, that's what you, you want, right? Because then you can, like you said, navigate through different contexts and make sure that you're going to be able to use language effectively, meaningfully, you see. And from my perspective, I felt that my this uh, last this, this last moment where I really decided to prepare for the C2, that was a moment where I felt that, wow, something changed in the way I, I was able to use language. Of, you know, I don't know if it had something to do with like being more mature, of course, and knowing that, okay, I'm going to do this as a living. Um, I'm going to be a teacher because before I was still like trying to understand what, what I was going to do in my life, you know, uh, to, to get by and everything. And then once I realized that, I really decided to devote myself and study and really try to um, like incorporate all these things that I've been learning. And, and this is something, it's a, it requires like constant contact. It, it, it's not only, okay, so you're not going to only spend like one year, two years, whatever, focusing on that and after it okay now this is over let's let's see what else is there for me to to do i guess it's something that you should always you know keep yeah. nourishing yes otherwise why are you doing that why are why, yeah. why bother right yeah it's it's the the idea that it, they always say like teaching is a passion and it's like Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a little cliche, but at the same, what oh it gosh, is, I mean, I relate, it is, I relate to it, you know, but teaching, okay. So teaching is passion. No, but you actually have to like interacting with people. You actually have to yeah. like investigate. You have to be a naturally curious person. You have to like doing these things. You have to like, uh, breaking down, you know, the complex situations and trying to figure them out and dissect them a little bit, mm -hmm. because that's, what we do and also you know thinking about uh communicating in intercultural education all of these things like you have to have a general interest for these if that amounts to teaching is passion okay mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. i can accept that cliche <laughs> put it on a t-shirt or on a mug that's fine with me uh -huh. but you have to have general you know awareness yeah. of what you like to do what's interesting for you what you're motivated to do yeah. my husband thinks i'm crazy half the time he's like what are you what are you doing and i just like i'm like oh i'm reading this really interesting article and he's like oh he, he just he just doesn't get he doesn't understand me because he doesn't have that i like it mm -hmm. it's interesting for me and yeah. so if it's interesting like it's just going to be like you said, lifelong pursuit of learning. It's just, mm -hmm. oh, that's different. Okay, that's something new. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, that's it. Totally yeah. see eye to eye with you, with you, uh, <laughs> with you on that. And something else that I think we, I we mentioned before, like uh, maybe on Friday, is okay. So exams, passionate about exams, biased to say it, whatever. But uh, there's still this whole thing about like, while well, being extremely expensive, like it, sometimes people are simply not going to be able to afford that. And well, what is the message that is been sent, right? Like, okay, so if you don't have a Cambridge certificate, that means that uh, do people, uh, I guess that sometimes people feel that they equate their self-worth and value with like a piece of paper. And I guess it, it has to do with everything that we, we are talking about because sure sitting at an exam can provide you with this uh lots of content it's standardization yeah i mean that's what they're trying to do they're trying to standardize the credentials of teachers which is important it's not mm -hmm. saying like <laughs> there was a beautiful sorry to cut you off there was a beautiful thing that that i think it was elon musk mm -hmm. he said like um 
that it's not necessarily, I think he said something along the lines of his hiring procedures at Tesla and that it was not necessary for you to have a college education to be hired there as an engineer. Mm -hmm. Now that comes from a man who has bachelor, I think multiple bachelor's degrees, for sure, multiple master's degrees from some of the most amazing institutions in the world. Mm -hmm. And is obviously a genius. I mean, creatively, what, however you it's feel about Elon, Musk, like creatively speaking, like he is just out of control, right? He's He's been doing insane amounts of things. Now he says that from a position of extreme institutionalized education and mm -hmm. says, well, you don't need to have it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would agree with him that you don't need to have it, but to be that exception, to be hired as an engineer at Tesla without that that basis of education it's really mm -hmm. hard so like i agree with you and i kind of disagree with the concept because like agree and disagree, you know what i mean because like the certificates are our way of standardizing like yes you've proven that you've been able to do it mm -hmm. but the certificates here in brazil are quite ex expensive and they're sometimes inaccessible to a large community of people mm -hmm. so then is it the only thing? No. Yeah, yeah. Is it the only thing that we have right now? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. And, you know, this is. Uh, <laughs> but it's you know, not your it's not your self-worth. It's just the only way that we have of measuring things at the at this point. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I see. And it, it's so tough because yeah. it's like, wow, uh, what do people do then? Right. Do we have to, you know, work our something off yes too i don't swear by the way i lived in utah as an that's fine <laughs> as a foreign exchange student oh gosh no i don't i don't know no, how no. To... <laughs> i'm no, just but... kidding i'm just kidding right but it's like uh that's i don't know i i, I remember when you texted me about like hey let's uh like do the podcast whatever and then i remember that i felt maybe we can touch upon this topic because Many, I, 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 I know that some teachers, they do address that on social media, you know, like the fact that, wow, this is so unfair. Like if you're not, if you, if you don't have the means to do it, what then? Like you're not part of the gang, right? Listen, you're not I'm not enough. saying, yeah, yeah listen. listen, I'm not saying that you're not part of the gang. I, I, I've been, you know, I've had the opportunities to be able to pay for these things. Um, it doesn't come without struggle. I know that there's probably a, a misconception like, oh, she's American. She has money. I, that's not true. I came from a very, very blue collar, working class military family. Like we did not have a lot. So um, and then I moved to the third world. So, whew, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that I'm not privileged, but I did have, you know, I did have privilege to be able to get those certificates. Mm -hmm. I don't have a solution. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a solution. So I can't, I. Yes, I can't I mean, propose anything. I know that it's not a value of self worth, but it's the only thing that we have in the system. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if I would say that if institutions are requiring teachers to get things, then they need to provide proper support for yeah. the teachers to be able to pay for those things. Mm -hmm. I think you know, uh, getting B two certificates across the board in public education and private institutes for high schools and things like that is amazing. But I also know that public teacher, public school teachers, the salary in Brazil is dismal. Yeah, it is. It's and it, it's going to take at least a month of their salary to be able to pay for a Cambridge exam. Yeah. <clears throat> and that that's a horrifying thing to say. You need to have this cert certification. Yeah. You need to have it, but we're not going to provide you with the financial resources on yeah. the back end. Mm -hmm. to and and we're also not going to provide you with any support. I don't know the like how to are... prepare for it, right? Exactly. So, yeah. No, but I guess and and yes, everything so... that are many things like on debate still. I guess, I'm, and I'm not really into the uh, yeah. I don't know the because... law. Yeah, the laws. I don't know what's going yeah, on with them because right now. Yeah. I, I I don't work for like this kinds of like schools or anything, but. Uh, I just feel that this is something that we should bear in mind, you know, like, because we do work with those people uh, and, okay, uh, if something happening and it's not fair, right, I guess it's important for, like, the the industry, as you like to put it, yes, I, it's something that people should 
take into consideration. Maybe, okay, we're not going to be able to come up with a solution right away, but still it's people start needs to talking more of like uh, are yeah, uh, addressing like, it somehow you know because... yeah like if, if it's going to be a thing then the, okay so if you guys are going to institute it then we have yeah. to think of not just instituting it because it's going to be better for it's going to be better for the students absolutely because they're going to have super qualified teachers you yeah. know and that have proficiency certificates awesome yeah. how are the teachers actually going to be able to prepare for it pay yeah. for it and then continue because at some point you know that it, it, it's just like nowadays in the business market. It was um, 30 years ago, if you had a bachelor's degree, oh, amazing, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a bachelor's degree now, nobody cares. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's it's getting to the point, if you have a master's degree, pff, yeah, yeah, okay, everybody has a master's degree or a, a, a postgraduate degree. Yeah. Now what? So like, it, it, I mean, it's, it's an accumulative effect. And so mm -hmm. if we're saying, okay, so now these teachers are gonna have to have B2 certificates in 20 years, they're probably gonna have to have C1 or C2 certificates to be able to teach. Mm. How are we changing the 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 whole process in being able to support teachers to get there? Because yeah. that's it, teacher, in the Western world, I mean, with the very few exceptions, teachers don't have high salaries. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, and it's not only about finances, but for them to prepare for the test and then for them to take the test and then sit yeah. the exams, get their certificate. And it I mean, is, they are it's doing, an I mean, investment. they are working, they work a lot and yeah. they, they have to find some time and like have the mental stability to keep all these plates spinning. Yeah. How come you see, and yeah. that, that was like the last topic that I, I thought of, you know, mm. like, and I guess just to wrap up the yeah, this, sure. this discussion, everything, this is something else that I've noticed. Like th these people are, they, they go through like hectic routines. They work like crazy. They have to, uh, they take work at home, for, for home, like, because they, they had to like correct texts, correct this and that. They have to prepare lessons. They have to do a lot of things and still worry about passing a freaking Cambridge exam, you know, pay for an extracurricular course, pay for the exam fee, uh, pay for a therapist, you know, and wow. I mean, we can lump, we can lump. It's not even, we're, we're talking about the public schools because of the, because of the new things that are coming into oh, yeah. legislation. But I mean, we can lump together all of the, the professionals, at least here in Brazil, because this is where our experience has been for primarily, you know, in Brazil, like lump everybody together. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's going to be quite challenging, mm -hmm. especially in private language schools, like what your mom, uh, you know, what you grew up in and what your mom had. So if all of the public institutions and, and private high schools and things like that have B2 level certified teachers, then, I mean, of course, mm -hmm. the private language institutes are, should have minimally are going to have to have B2, if not higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess, there's going to... I guess the reality nowadays some, for some schools, I'm again, I'm not really sure, but yeah. some schools are already requiring like higher level certificates. And, oh, yeah. 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 No, I, I have friends who have uh, their own schools that, that require C2 certificates yeah. for entry level teachers. Like, and that's it because they have to have a differential. Like if you're a language institute, what are you, what more are you adding? What, uh, what extra value are you adding that people are going to spend, mm -hmm. you know, ex yeah. money to, to take a course there as opposed to in regular institutes. It's just, again, I think we're, we're not having, we have no solutions to this, but <laughs> yeah. it's things to think about because it, you know, we're going to have an influx of teachers. We're going to have an influx of, you know, people that are going to try and get these certificates. If you're thinking about teaching exams like Kathleen has been doing. Um, and I know that out of the box and Rodrigo is offering, um, they, you guys have a program, right? Yeah. For the public school teachers. Yeah. So tell it's, us about that. So we yes, can... I think you can um, register or like ap apply for it. Yeah. By the <laughs> don't 15th, remember the <laughs> fifteenth, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, by November fifteenth. Yeah. So go ahead, right? If you are or if you know anybody who teaches for like public schools, mm. it doesn't. Uh, it's not aimed at uh, only English teachers, like teachers who teach English, but 
any kind of like public public school teachers, if you uh, if you're interested, out of the box is going to provide like scholarships, right? Yeah. For for mm -hmm. these people, and if I'm not mistaken, it's like um, like a one year course, something like that. Yeah. You see, so and it's so nice to see these kinds of things happening uh, because it's a way to give back to the community, I guess, right? And just really provide, nice initiative. Yeah. yeah, it's like just provide people with some kind of support. It's not ideal. It's not, you know, okay, we're going to solve everybody's issues. Of course not. But still, I guess it's like a very nice opportunity. So, mm -hmm. you know, like spread the word. If you yeah, know. yeah. Of course. I mean, you know, get in touch and see even if it's past the deadline and see if there's, you know, enrollment or how things work or just in kind of investigate. I mean, it's, it's great that private institutions like uh, or private schools like out of the box can do things like that. Yeah. Um, but again, you know, it's like a, a drip in the ocean. So people have to start think. And I think that's that's why, you know, I respect Rodrigo. Like we're, we're starting to think about things like okay, so this is coming. What can we do to try and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> help and the scenario out, right? It's it's going to be complicated. Yeah, and so. sometimes I do think about those things a, a lot, you know, and uh, but I guess one, of, of course, like we can start try doing something to make a difference, but yeah. it's a system which is bigger than everybody, right? So right. I guess if things take time, but uh, like, I guess talking about it, it's where it just makes people think about some some stuff and maybe nice solutions can come up or like some ideas, right? Might, yeah, yeah. might arise from it. So I guess that's the only reason why I, I decided to touch upon that, right? Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's great. And I think obviously you're probably doing a great job uh, <laughs> great exams and teaching oh. teachers and, you know, taking on that role and um, I think it's good. I think people need to have more conversations like that about it and not be afraid because uh, we had talked about it briefly, but just kind of. Oh wrapping gosh, up we've it. talked about so much. Yes, we did. Yes. Yeah. We, <laughs> yeah, the past couple of weeks, it's just been a lot. Um, yeah. But, you know, like not feeling like you don't have anything to contribute to the conversation, because even though, you know, I'm a huge supporter of like research what you do, look at it, read papers, understand this, like the science and the, 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 the mm -hmm. facts and the evidence behind it. Yeah. But, um, but personal experience uh, also is valid and should be shared. And yeah. you know what I mean? And so like connecting with people and seeing what other people are doing and seeing what's going on, I think that's um, quite a good message. So yeah. if people want to connect with you, uh, we do, we, I will share your Instagram um, where you post lots of good tips and stuff like that. For... Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's got her own kind of vibe too. It's like the style, it's very stylized. It's very, you yeah. know, it's very modern and stuff, but you share yeah. a lot of good content there. So it's nice to see, you know, like sharing and, and connecting with people so people can connect with you on Instagram. I think um, that's, that's the greatest lesson I've learned in the past few years. Like, okay. Um, I'm new to all this. I, I'm starting to get to know people. I'm, I'm yeah. getting in touch with all these outstanding, amazing professionals. And all right, uh, sometimes you might feel a little bit afraid or like, oh gosh, people are going to judge me. Can I really do this? Can I really like say something about it? Yeah. Does it matter? Does my the, Can I actually bring something to the table? You know, so I have been in this place countless times questioning myself, wondering, Everybody if, has. you know, if, if, okay, like, but what do I have to, for example, when you texted me, I was like, why does she want to talk to me? Like, <laughs> I, to everyone. What? I don't, like, 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 I don't, I don't even know why people listen to me on the podcast, to be honest. Like, no, but you see, but... <laughs> I'm just throwing ideas out there. <laughs> no, but it's like, okay, like what? But, but I mean, that we, sh that's what you said. I guess it's important to be responsible with what you post, the messages that you're trying to, to communicate, to send out to the world, right? Right. But at the same time, uh, we should not be afraid of like just sh expressing who, uh, ourselves, like sharing good content and like trying to help others out because in the end of the, at the end of the day, like that's what, I don't know, that's what I'm trying to do. That's what I think people should try to do. Like, your, what teachers should do. I mean, yeah, people in general, should, but like teachers should be sharing information. Yeah, like, okay. Like our job. 
what are you doing? You're just like trying to support one another because yeah. something else that which is that is very interesting and, and like I, I hold really closely to my heart is like in, in this last few years, I've met so many amazing colleagues, amazing teachers who have helped me so much, you know, and not only regarding like teaching or whatever. So sometimes we, I, I like to call it my, our little venting sessions, you know, like where we're going to meet, meet to just nice. bear frustrations. And you see, it's so nice. It's so nice to have that yeah. support, to have that network. And like, this is what we're doing now. You see, yeah. uh, we met at a certain event and then this thing happened. I've, I've been through, I, I, I actually had a, a hard time you know like the first time we tried to do this because at some point i was so scared i was so afraid of being judged or whatever that i i felt that i couldn't just keep up with it and you gave me like another chance of this like i don't know if you wanted to want me to put it like that but it's just like okay don't worry we can postpone this we can have this conversation uh another day and that's it you know so I'm really grateful for all the opportunities that life has like thrown my way, you know, and um, I guess that's, this is what we got to keep doing. Just being supportive, like sharing, uh, sharing nice and helpful things, meaningful content, because that's it. Like we have so yeah. much to learn from one another. So let's keep for all sure. these doors open. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I think we touched on that. Like last week, it was like people, it's fine. You can, you can share your experience it doesn't matter where you are in your like the whole like teaching career like it's fine you you just need to share what you've what you've gone through because it might be different from what somebody else has gone through yeah again i support research and please read and investigate and listen to other people and do workshops and do all of that type of stuff too yeah get training but, get cons- yeah get training, training and, do, yeah, and, and, and like learn from the. i mean this is something that i do like not only when it comes to teaching but in many aspects of my life, I, I, I find meaning in learning from, from others, from people that came before me, from people who have had different experiences. So, mm-hmm. wow, it, you can, it's so enrich, enriching to have, to, to exchange information like that and to yeah. s- just take a few step backs and, and look, look at what hap- at, at what is happening and learn from it, you know. Yeah. And like, don't be afraid. I think that because one of the things that we talked about was like cancel culture and the cancel culture is real people. And so, but here's the thing you're in a certain time and space right now. Right. And you've had certain experiences. If you say something, I know that I'm going to look back on some of these podcasts and just laugh, (laughs) laugh at them because I, I'm growing like this is there's there's a there's progress happening right as we all are and so if someone says something I don't know yesterday Mm -hmm. or two weeks ago please don't judge them for what there's I mean if it's a repeated offense and it's something that is not okay then yes depends on the statement right yeah (laughs) depends on the statement but but if they're saying something and it's um ill-advised or if it's not really based in any evidence or if it's really anecdotal like it's only one scenario that's happened with them in a specific classroom and it only happened once um just just know that that person is is, you know, relating their experience, but hopefully they'll continue learning and like what they believe now or what they've experienced now is not what they're going to, to believe or have experienced in in the future. So, you know, be, be a little kind and, and, and understand like, oh, if somebody's saying something, I've done this before. Mm -hmm. Somebody says something and said, huh, that's interesting. Have you ever heard of this? Yeah. Yeah. Don't say like cancel this person. They or don't know if fingers at somebody. Yeah, right? like no. no. Have you ever heard of this? No. Oh, okay. Well, I think you should investigate that because that's actually really interesting. I think it might solve the problem that you're having right there. Yeah, and also like that's it. Done. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> no canceling. No canceling. Yeah, and and also like just accept that yes, everybody has their own limitations, and that's it. Yeah. Like like we have said countless times. There's always room for improvement and that's yep. nice, you know, like uh, being open to criticism, of course. Right. And yes, and just like if so- if somebody disagrees with you, listen to their message because there's a reason that they're disagreeing with you and it might be based 
in, I know you don't close your ears, Kathleen. It might be based in bullshit, but it might be based in something good. <laughs> no, I said that because seriously, the, the experience that I've had is like, I lived one year with a Mormon family. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. So and then I'm the I opposite served, of that. I feel, I feel very weird, like using the F word, you know? <laughs> I use it on a frequent basis. You know, so, <laughs> no, uh, like I, no, I don't. And I'm not, I'm like being serious. I'm not mocking it. Come on. Like, no, I'm no, completely no, respectful, no. you see, but it's like, I don't, I remember even like, oh my God, I, I often find myself saying gosh instead. Yep. Yeah. You see? But Culture. it was quite, yeah, Culture. quite, quite a nice experience. Yeah. Alrighty. Anyways, well, yeah. let's wrap it up. And I'll tell you, are welcome back anytime. We can oh, talk about thank exams. Thank you so much. Anything I'm, else? I'm so grateful. No, that that's it. I'm so grateful. Yeah. You are so nice, so knowledgeable, so inspiring. <laughs> you know, like, um, thank you. Seriously, I've learned so much from you back then, like back uh, on that day when we you were delivering the workshop last week during our uh, uh, exchange of messages or whatever, and. That's it. Thank you so much. I'm so happy we've had the this opportunity here to just share some, you know, absolutely uh, experiences and everything. Thank you for having me one more time, and everybody that um, you know are is, is still listening to this. All yeah, <laughs> all these babbling. Yeah. Come on, yeah, yeah. But, you know, who knows what, what's going to happen? But please, uh, please get in touch with Kathleen. Uh, oh, I, I don't yeah. even know if anybody listens to me to be honest. <laughs> Um, well, people do, of course. I, I, hopefully. I'm sure, sure they hopefully. do. Yeah. Oh, come on. Uh, oh, if they Kathleen. don't, they should. If they yeah. don't, they should. Yeah. Um, get in touch with Kathleen on Instagram, and then she'll, hopefully she'll come back and, and share some more of her experience. It'd be it'd be fun to do a, a follow-up show of what has happened since. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Kathleen. All right. You're welcome. Bye, everyone. Bye. See ya. Ready to join the conversation? Head on over to Instagram at Kelly Pennington ELT and send me a message. That's it for now. Take care of yourself, your health, your vibe, and your tribe. Until next time.